fantastic. And in this video art, or this video episode, not art tutorial, but it's an episode, um, I'm going to be talking about um, teaching the principles of art. So I'm going to give you some tips and advice for teaching the principles of art to your students. So let's dive in on this episode and let's make some art. easier principles to teach. Some of the concepts are a little bit more challenging. So in order to build student confidence and scaffold the learning, we're going to start off with the easier principles of art to teach. For instance, balance and symmetry is way easier than, um, say, uh, unity as a concept to understand, right? Like after a while, obviously it makes, oh yeah, unity and variety, that's easy to understand. Well, but not if you are initially trying to grasp it um, as a student and depending on their age, right? It may be a little bit more challenging. Whereas symmetry, well, you can, symmetry is pretty obvious, right? When you look at it, oh, it's a mirror image or the way you divide it up. Um, there's different ways to do symmetry. So that one's a little easier to grasp than say something more vague such as unity and variety, right? Um, and so just thinking about ways or proportions a little easier to understand than something that's like something like that, right? Whereas when we're beginning um, to teach it, well, for example, what I'm trying to say is like compare principal design are a little bit hard to understand, I think, compared to the elements of art. They're a lot more obvious than the principles, right? So thinking about that and then asking students to think about all these things all the time <laughs> as they create their own art later on in, you know, like at middle school and high school, you know, it gets a lot more complicated. So just thinking about how we can scaffold the learning to make it more approachable for students is a great step to allowing them to be more successful with it. All right, now next is to do your experimentation and learning activities first um, before you ask them to do uh, an entire artwork. So what I like to do is I like to spend one lesson doing like an introduction, teaching what that principle is, right? So I say it's balance. Okay, today we're learning about balance. I'm going to spend a day just introing it, maybe taking looking a look at some different artworks, examples in our history, and pointing out, you know, balance in the design and different ways balance can be seen and pointing out it as a design element. Um, and then um, maybe doing some little experimentation activities in the next couple classes where they're experimenting, trying different ways to uh, create balance. And then after we do all that, after that we've done the learning and the practicing with our experiment team, that is, um, then we're ready to move on into your making. But we're, you're going to use this time as your formative assessment where you're going to take a look, see what students know, you're going to do a lot of think or shares and all, you know, collaborative discussions about things, um, looking at artworks um, in our history, all these things so that way, and you're going to see students um, experiment because that way you're going to gauge if they're ready to move on, right? So if all the students are showing um, in their little experimentations that they understand balance, they can create it in a small tiny scale or whatever in their experimentations. You can be like, okay, everybody knows it. Oh, maybe there's five kids that don't know it, so I'm going to pull them in. I'm going to do small group instruction with them. Or if there's just one kid who has maybe missed a bunch of kids, while well, everyone's experimenting, you can do some one-on-one -on -one with that person, catch them up. Now everybody's at the same level. We all have a good understanding. Now we're ready to move on. Now, before we do move on, I do have a question for you. It is, what principle of design are you starting with in your class this year to teach? What principle of design do you like to start with when you teach the principles of design in art. So let me know in the comment section below the video and also check out every, what everybody else says to kind of gauge it so you can kind of get different opinions and feedback to help you be your best self. Woo! All right, number three. <coughs> I'm going to destroy my voice doing this. Tea time! Number three, check out this new mug I bought. This is a handmade mug by artist Dave Doby. Yep local potter. This mug is so legit. He has these little 
I'm so distracted, I know. But look at how, look at this beautiful glaze. Yeah, so three different levels of glaze. This thing is perfectly balanced. Like fits in your hand like this, or you could like stick your hand through it and you have these cute little nibs, little indents for your finger and thumb. And look at this glaze. I have an older version of his mug from like 10 years ago. And you could totally see, you know, he's a master potter, how he's improved. The walls are so thin and consistent through the handle and through the whole thing and the base, like you can see, it's like it's been pulled masterfully, this bum mug. And look at this glaze that he made. Look at it, it has three different levels where he's dipped it, and I don't even, and then you can see like the specks from the glaze coming through, the root teal. Isn't that beautiful? This is ginger tea, if you're wondering. Anyways, number three is after, I just love, I love clay. And anyways, I have a ceramic, collection and a collection of mugs from artists anyways i just really love this one you know the color of the clay underneath i don't want to hand it this far oh i'll drink it like this so you can see the clay mm. it's a beautiful mug okay anyways after they have had the opportunity to learn and understand now you can ask them to show what they know so you're going to do your introduction you're learning you're looking at art in our history blah 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 you're going to teach it and um, preload them and allow them time to practice and learn technical skill. Now that you've done all that, now you're going to do an artwork in the theme of whatever principle of your design you're focusing on. And then also this is where you're going to do your more summative assessment, give your grade or mark, for instance. Um, so. I think that is that is your final step, right? I don't want to give a grade or assessment when they don't actually know like what they're doing and haven't had the opportunity to learn. So we're gonna let them have the opportunity to learn first, and then now we can give them a remark on their art project. Now wait, it's fair, right? How can you expect them, you know, it's it'd be very unfair to be like, okay, you've never learned this before, go make it, and now I'm gonna give you a grade based on that, right? That's very unfair. So we're gonna learn first, and now we're going to give a grade on the artwork that they produce. Um, and then however you do your feedback, um, where you are, that is what you would obviously do. <laughs> it's going to be different everywhere um, on how you grade or mark or give feedback or whatever it is nowadays. Um, so do it for where you are. And then also, I think, um, is yeah, basically what I'm trying to say is that this is your moment to do that, right? Give them their feedback. And you're not grading everything this way, right? You're not all the time marking and grading, right? You're not gonna grade every single piece of thing and enter grades. You're only gonna do it on their art projects. And they still have to make it, so it takes some days to do that, and then that's when you're gonna give it. And then give them proper feedback, like give them some written proper feedback or do some one-to-one -one student conferencing on their artwork and be fair, right? You haven't given any um, marked work uh, until this, so now this you're gonna give some fair, proper feedback. All right, number four is to teach each principle as a unit in your older grades and then more exploratory, like, you know, little tidbits in your younger grades. So if I'm doing principles of design, principles of design with my younger grades, I might do like a principles of design workbook, um, like for primary or elementary. Now, if you're looking for that, I will link to that in the description of this video. Um, I do have a workbook for both primary and elementary as a principles of design workbook. And that way they're getting, you know, working through it over a series of classes, but they're getting to know all the different principles of design together um, or one at a time, but like in, you know, over a few classes versus like going in depth into each principle of design. Now, if I'm doing it for older grades, such as middle school or high school, I would go more in depth and maybe focus it on it as a unit um, where that you give an, an introduction video or a slideshow. Um, and you, you know, introduce it, you look at art that has to do with the principles of design, then they can do some experimentation um, and or warm up activities, um, and then maybe do some artworks that, a variety of artworks to do with the principles of design that they're focusing on. Now, that is what I would do and how I would treat it for all the different grades, and especially if you teach lots of grades, you can pre-teach them throughout the lower grades and then, you know, scaffold it to be a little bit more complicated when you get into the higher grades, you know, focus a little bit more on the elements of art a lot, you know, very heavily in the elementary phases in middle school and high school, focusing on those principles, the design to really allow for some complex learning. And that way it's not just like their entire element, you know, their entire education is so like elements of art, elements of art, elements, of, elements, elements of art. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh, and then they're gonna be like, oh, art is elements of art. It's line, value, color, shape, form, space, and texture. Woo! Like, <laughs> we don't wanna do that, right? That's really not what art is when you're an artist. <laughs> I'm just looking at my art thing, you're like, that's, I think about it, but it's not what art is. <laughs> art is not going, this is an art of line. So we want to teach, we want to just give them the tools and build on the tools and give them the tools to create so that way when they become an artist or they want to pursue it further, they have all the tools in their tool belts to like really make some sick art. All right. So if you're looking for my, um, my elements of art, sorry, bleh, principles of design, uh, workbooks for primary and elementary, or if you want to check out my fully planned art units for each of the principles of art for your middle or high school level students. I do have those fully planned as well with all your lesson plans, your art projects, all of it pre-done. You can check out those in the as links below the, in the description of this video. I will link to them for you so you can check them out. Um, they are so easy to use because they're already planned and done! Woo! I know, right? Already planned and done. Um, or, if you're looking for all my elements of art and principal design, or if you just want a full art curriculum to help you um, plan your entire year and you want access to everything, then make sure you get on the wait list for our Tastic Collective Art Curriculum. It is my art curriculum where I give you all of a variety of different resources for art history and artists and elements of art and principles of design um, and ceramics and sculpture and different themes. If you want fully planned art lessons in giant mass bulk, you can join my membership to my Artastic Collective art curriculum by visiting artasticcollective.com or search on Google Artastic Collective or click the link for that in the description of below the video. I do enrollment twice a year to make sure you get on the wait list to join um, and I'm so excited if you decide to do that. But if you're just looking for some principles of design art lessons, you can get some ideas by checking out my resources in the description of this video. Thank you so much for watching. Your next video to watch is what I wish I knew as a new teacher. And you can watch that by clicking the link above or in the description of this video. And I'll see you in that episode. Please make sure you like, subscribe to this channel, like this video, subscribe to this channel and share this video. That way you're going to be able to help me continue to create these videos. I really need um, likes and subscriptions and shares in order for my videos to be seen. Um, and if they're not seen, there's really no point in me continuing to do this. So please help me by continuing to like and share my, share my videos, subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it. And then I will continue, I promise, to make these videos for you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.